you know, true to form, there's a correlation. The less sovereignty a country has over its own economic uh, policies, the weaker it is. And it's not just because you are sovereign, you're going to be good, but it's a stepping stone. And it makes sense, right? The colonies were never successful in their own right. But they became sovereign. And in this country, I think we can think about that. We're not colonized anymore, but then again, we are by the corporations. So I think like one of the ways we could go about this is by, you know, having a democratic government that is sovereign and, and reclaiming our sovereignty because we don't have it. It's so important. We don't have sovereignty over this country. I come to the logical conclusion that nation state is not an absolute. It is relative. Right. Because it, 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 it is a creation. It is what we're doing. What if another country disagrees with what we're doing? And what we're doing? Yes. And then they also have the absolute right to, first off, not trade with us, or to organize other nations that agree with them about our policy to not trade with us. That sometimes gets our attention. Also, to start, uh, say, radio free, what, whatever the U.S. border would be, to broadcast uh, communications or where you can find the internet nowadays. Uh, by the way, uh, regarding subsidiarity, uh, that's cool within uh, an arrangement of what governance that, and different levels of governance that have been actually authorized. Uh, however, for instance, the United Nations is a, is a great meeting place for nations to yeah. discuss things. Perhaps remember that uh, a lot of the uh, immediate problems with uh, European national economies uh, owes to the fact that these countries actually lack fiscal and monetary uh, sovereignty. When they signed on to the EU, which is a relatively good thing, and they need to be integrated, I'm not, you know, I'm not some crazy statist or something, uh, they lost their monetary and fiscal sovereignty so that European countries actually resemble U.S. states more than they do national economies. They, don't, they can't devalue their currency to get them out of crisis. They can't spend more money. They're, the Maastricht Treaty prevents them from spending more than 3% of GDP. It was a poor choice. It was also illegitimate. It was illegitimate. Yeah, it's straight, it, it put them in a, it put them in a uh, binding constraints. That, that, that it puts them in binding constraints. Yeah, it puts them in binding constraints that doesn't allow for the fiscal and monetary flexibility you need to respond to so governance. Downturns. Downturns. You need to do something about downturns. Well, I have to get going. I have, like I say, papers are great. I've enjoyed our debate. Here. Mutual. <laughs> Thanks for continuing. coming. And Come back. Keep doing what you're doing. This is absolutely you. wonderful. Great to meet you, sir. Great to meet Thank you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Come back. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was awesome. That's how democracy works. <laughs> <laughs> Less alcohol than 200 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> the other night, I was there actually, and I saw from my own standpoint what happened. And to me, what I saw was not from inside of the circle, inside the camp, but it didn't look like especially bad brutality from what I've seen in the past. It didn't look like especially bad police action. But I've heard, can you just, but then I read the statement that was pretty strongly worded about against the police yeah. department. Can you say anything about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was actually um, in a room up there watching down. Um, we were live streaming it. But a room up, up where? Um, in, in one of these buildings here, okay. just to the side. Um, yeah. There was definitely police brutality. I mean, it's no one was, was murdered. There, it could have been worse, definitely. I think why it stood out so much is because this is a peaceful movement. No one fought back. I heard one cop got hit in the face. That's like one person out of hundreds um, that, that fought back. Um, so I think it was really shocking that they still were brutal. And the first move of violence they did was to start beating veterans of peace. Um, they were just standing there protecting us. Uh, that did, was, they, did they beat them with, with what, with clubs? Uh, with, with sticks, I believe. With sticks? Yeah, they were abilities? on the ground, they, they ripped their flags. Here, there's a flag. Um, they ripped their flags, they were beaten. Um, a lot of them have band-aids. A lot of people that were arrested have bruises. Um, so it was pretty shocking. Is there a video of that? Is there on, yes. online on your website? Yeah, on, on, on we're, our website? we're editing it now, so okay. it'll go on soon. Okay. There's going to be some hard evidence, some video evidence. It's, that, it's hard to watch. Okay. Yeah, of course it is. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's it for now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Sage. Do you want to say your first name? You don't uh, have to, but... Yeah, it's Acacia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sage. I just opened, like, uh, Occupy Boss's labor outreach. 
But sometimes they're gonna learn the hard way. Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe you do one of them if you're going to do something that says Occupy Boston supports the Verizon workers because we're going to be marching that's to the, the wireless and it would be great for them to see specifically. I mean, our union got a lot of solidarity from uh, these good guys in 2222 and we want to do what we can both to support Occupy Boston but to support these Verizon workers. Yeah, but I'm still going to take one our break because I'm seeing some people doing logistics. Now, we have a lot of things. Thank you.